Welcome to the exciting topic of sex ratios. So, the article that you read, you should have a pretty good idea of what this is about. But let's, let's take a little bit of a step back here. We're talking about sexual reproduction, and one of the nifty things that we get with sexual reproduction is sexes. So let's take the two-sex system, and that raises some sort of fundamental questions. So is it best to have equal numbers of each sex? And for whatever numbers of each we should have, how can a balance be maintained stably over many generations? And what kinds of factors affect this balance? So let's think about this. So is it better to have a boy or a girl? People talk about this all the time, but let's look at it from a kind of adaptive standpoint. We talk about females being the choosy sex, so maybe it's better to have a girl. Or maybe if many females can breed with one male, then in a population, you don't really need as many males, so it would be more efficient to just have less males. We can look at this a number of different ways, but something that it just really comes down to is what kind of babies is everybody else having? So what is going to be advantageous for the mother is what is going to be more rare in the population. We call this frequency-dependent selection. So here's an example. So all your neighbors and community, they're all having girls. What should you have? Well, you should have a boy. Why should you have a boy? Because in this particular population, having a boy, that boy will have more chances to mate as an adult than if you had a girl, because everybody else is having girls. So the boy will be more rare, will have more chances to mate. So this is, you can see how this could be a kind of balancing effect. So if you get too much in one direction, then this effect would bring it back towards the other direction. However, it's not the only thing to consider. Um, you also need to consider what kinds of costs and investment you're making into your offspring. And so what about a situation where if you, one of the sexes requires more cost, more investment than the other? So let's talk about the example of a time investment. Let's say you're a species where it takes two years to make a daughter, make, raise a daughter, invest in a daughter, versus only one year for a son. So what would you expect? For your sex ratio, now is the situation where you shouldn't have equal numbers of sons and daughters in the population. You would expect that in the population there would be that there should be the production of more sons, twice as many, in fact. And the balancing effect here is that there's a higher cost for um, for daughters because it takes two years to go into it but they have higher reproductive success, there's less of them. So those are the two balancing costs, benefits and costs. Okay, so in your article, there are a number of different ways you can talk about sex ratio. It talked about it at birth, and the way that it reports it is the number of boys born per 100 girls born. And so it's listed as a number, a number that's roughly 100, and that's what that means. So it's boys, if you look at it, the ratio, it's boys over girls. Okay? So if you look at it, though, it's not, we talk about it being, okay, well, for humans, we have equal numbers of boys and girls. Well, it was looked at, and it's not exactly 100 to 100. Um, the normal state of things is actually slightly more boys. And why is that? Well, um, it is equal once you get to reproductive age. However, 
in the time between when you're born and when you get to reproductive age, there's actually a higher loss of boys than for girls. And that's due to disease. And as the article mentions, higher incidence of violence and risky behaviors. So, also talked about by the article were the various cultural factors, which can influence the parents and which sex they want to have, and that then influences what they do about having children. So when we look at this, we can see that we're kind of talking about two different levels. We're talking about the individual level. We're talking about mothers, fathers, offspring. One mother, what, what sex offspring will this mother have? And we're also talking about the population level. That's when we're talking about sex ratio is we're talking about at the population level. How many boys born versus girls born. And the actions at the individual level affect the population level. So you sum all of those individual actions and you're looking at the population level effects. So what kind of factors are we talking about? Well, there have been studies looking at the firstborn versus the secondborn. So this is showing you year on the x-axis, and here they're actually talking about sex ratio girls per 1,000 boys. So this is actually stated slightly differently than the way it was in the article. So here we have 700, 800, 900, 1,000. So if you had an equal sex ratio girls to boys, that would be the, here at this line, 1,000, okay? And what we're comparing here is two different scenarios. Your second birth, if the firstborn was a boy, and your second birth, if the firstborn was a girl. So you see that in cases where the firstborn was a girl, the second birth is much less likely to be a girl than if your uh, firstborn was a boy. So if you look, if you remember from the article, if you already have a boy, okay, you've got your boy. Okay, then if you have a girl, it's not a big deal. But if your firstborn is a girl, okay, fine. But your second birth, well, that better be a that better be a boy. That's the basic idea here. So what about other factors that influence this? Well. Education is one. So here again we have year and the sex ratio of girls per 1,000 boys. And here we're looking at two different um, education levels. Oh, that kind of came out a little bit funny on here. Well, the, the idea here, though, is that um, with a, a lower level of education, you get... So you get, um, actually, with the lower line, uh, if I recall correctly, this is actually higher education. So with more education, you actually get less girls. Could be more access to, uh, to facilities as well. Um, wealth, another factor that can, can come in um, here, you're poorer versus richer, again, um, I would suspect that this is related to access to to uh, facilities and treatments. So this is showing less girls because we're talking about girls per thousand boys. So we're lowering the number of girls here with higher wealth versus less wealth. Okay, those are just some of the cultural factors. So so what about all this stuff? Okay, um, you know, so you increase the sex ratio, so you have more boys and girls. So what? Right? Well, part of what we're concerned about is that we haven't actually really experienced a huge shift in sex ratio before, at least that we know about, and we don't exactly know what might happen, but we can make some predictions that it would really change the dynamics of things. And in the smaller scale, we've already seen that to be the case. And we think about this idea of what's rare 
Well, what's rare is more in demand. If you're the only boy surrounded by girls, well, that's a great situation for you, but not so much for the girls. And if you are the only girl surrounded by boys, well, that could be a good situation for you, but not so much for the others. So think about competition and resources and resource limitation. Well, that happens in mating as well. So if you have many mates to choose from, that is a lot of resources. But if you don't, then that's a limitation on resources. And what happens when you have a limit on resources? Competition. So to head off possible problems, including there is a, a discussion about what happens if you have a lot of young men in a population, will that lead to violence? So in order to address the sex ratio imbalance, there one, one method is, is basically propaganda, public outre outreach campaigns, and to let people know, hey, you know, you have this, yeah, okay, recognizing there's this, this cultural bias towards boys, but hey, you know, if everybody's having boys, but you have a girl, well, she's going to have a lot better chance of, of marrying and pushing this pushing this point. Okay, so parental choice is not the only thing that affects sex ratios. The environment plays a huge role, and you can look at this in a number of different species. So, for instance, one, one trend that's been found is that the sex is actually can be determined by temperature. So, for example, in alligators, they're incubating the eggs. Um, if they're in a marshy type habitat, the eggs are incubated at a higher temperature. And what happens then is that the eggs are incubated at a higher temperature, they're larger, they're more likely to be females. Well, that's pretty interesting. And if they're in a more open water habitat, they're more likely to be smaller, they're low water, lower they're incubated at a lower temperature and those eggs turn into male into into males so temperature can affect sex ratio because it can affect whether that egg is going to be a male or a female sex ratio can also be influenced by nutrition because nutrition can actually influence whether you have a male or a female offspring so if you look at, for example, um, in a type of deer, if the deer is having less nourishment, the mother has less nourishment, then that results in her being more likely to have a male. So why would that correlation be happening? Well, the thing is, males, in this, in this case and in many other cases, are more likely to disperse. They're more likely to go away from home versus females who stay at home and near mom. So if you have a malnourished mother, it might be good for your offspring to go somewhere else. Might this be a good thing? Well, if you're already having limited resources, you don't want your offspring to stay in the same place as you and be competing with you for food. Okay, so that's, that's that um, uh, reasoning for why that kind of makes sense. But then Let's go back, let's go into the more proximate side of this, okay? That's more ultimate. Why is that adaptive? Well, let's go into the proximate side of this and go, well, how exactly does nourishment actually influence the sex? Well, some researchers have looked at this, and basically there's some alterations in the mother's reproductive tract that is um, related to nourishment. And what happens is, the reproductive tract itself, with those alterations, favors sperm carrying the Y. So temperature, nutrition, just some of the environmental physical effects that can affect whether the offspring is going to be a boy or a girl, and thus sex ratio. Now, we can also look at in-the-womb effects. So this whole area of research is really interesting. Um, a kind of interesting example is actually in some mites. And their uh, life history, the offspring actually reach 
sexual maturity while they are still inside the mother. Now, the strategy here that works best is to have many females and few males. Think about why, why would that be? Why is this a different kind of case? Well, in this situation, you actually have the sons fighting each other for the chance to mate with the daughters. And the successful strategy for the mother is to have only enough sons to guarantee that all the daughters are fertilized. Because it's, no, it's not advantageous to produce more males than are necessary because they're just going to be competing with each other. So that's that situation. And then we can get into more subtle effects. And um, there's a whole area of research looking at in, especially in, in animals that have large litters, or at least any species that has multiple, carrying multiple offspring at the same time, who are you next to? And it's actually found that who you're next to influences your characteristics after you're born and, and, and whether you have more masculine or more feminine traits. So if you are a female, okay, in between two males, that will be a different situation than if you were a female in between two females. And if you're between two males, then you might have more masculine traits than if you're a female between two, two females. And there are hormonal effects involved here. So we've looked at sex ratios and we've seen how the mother has an effect on it either directly and deliberately or through the environment and also we need to keep in mind this individual and population level perspective where individuals are having offspring that are either male or female and this is the sum total of all of those is what goes into figuring out, okay, what is the actual sex ratio for the population?